Hey guys, and welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing a kind of like a lighter spring makeup look for you. Not light as in tinted moisturizer light, but something that is not as heavy as like the smoky eyes that I do all the time. I also have some new products to share with you and kind of show you um, things I don't really know how I feel. Kind of like this Cover FX Power Play. Is it Power? Yeah, Power Play Foundation. I also have some new things to try out like this Milk um, a Full Coverage Concealer, the Milk Makeup Full Coverage Concealer. I'm also going to be applying lashes today, but they're not going to be as dramatic as what you guys are used to seeing me do. These are really gorgeous, and I'm going to show you kind of like how you can really enhance your lashes that you already have with these. And these are the Kiss Blowout Lash, and I really like them. Make your natural lashes look like you have like lash extensions on. So if you guys are interested, then definitely keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and hit that bell. I know it's like a big thing right now and you guys are probably sick and tired of hearing every single creator say this But if you do want to see my videos pop up and you want to be notified then definitely hit the bell right next to the subscribe button And you'll be notified hopefully <laughs> so without further ado Let's just go ahead and get started. I'm pretty sad I got these dry bar clips for free when I bought my wand. Where was it? I think it was at Ulta I got the clips for free or maybe Sephora I don't know, I think it was Ulta. But now I can't find the other ones and they're like my favorite clips ever. And I do have hair extensions now. Yay! So I'm gonna kind of start with the face really quickly. Um, I'm gonna use an SPF today. This is new, I just got this from Sephora. It's the Kula 70% Organic Full Spectrum 360 Sun Silk Drops. It says indoor and outdoor, environmental and digital, UVA, UVB, IR, HEV protection. You get one fluid ounce. This is plant protection, cruelty free, vegan, antioxidant enriched. I'm excited to try this out. The box is so cute. Again, I got this from Sephora. I made like a whole Sephora order and believe it or not, like, I made some restocks, but I purchased new stuff, and I'm, like, so disappointed in, like, half the things that I got. But I'll mention that in my Hits and Misses video. This is what it looks like. Very cute. It has one of those pumps where you just go like this, and then take it off. So I'm going to put this on my hand. It's kind of liquidy. <gasps> I just spilled that everywhere. I'm just going to put this all over my skin. It kind of smells like Fruit Loops. It kind of smells beachy. It's just a different mixture, but it definitely is lightweight. And I did put it on my neck and stuff, so... Yeah, I just figured I would start testing this out and see how I like it for my skin. I'm really huge on not putting like self-tanner on my face, not getting my face super tanned or anything like that. Because first off, I'm sensitive. My skin is, I've had rosacea as you guys can see. My skin is so sensitive. This is nice too because it's not making it flare up or anything. So that's a really good sign so far. What I'm actually going to do is going to go ahead and prime my eyes. I'm going to use the Smashbox Photo Finish Lid Primer. And put this on my skin. I can definitely feel that serum, like that SPF serum, drying down. It feels really nice. It feels like plump. So the palette that I pulled today is kind of perfect for spring. I didn't even think about it. But it's the Tartlet in Bloom palette. Do they still have this? I sure hope so. This is what it looks like. I haven't used this palette in so long. But I really loved this color, as you guys can tell. But I do, like I said, want to keep this kind of lighter. So I'm going to go in first. I'm going to take this little Milani travel size brush. And go in with Flower Child, which is this matte shade here. And I'm going to set my entire lid with this so that that primer is nice and smooth and dry. And none of our shadows kind of like stick and get choppy. What I'm going to do is take Smarty Pants. I love that name. And just fluff this into the crease. This is another Milani Travel Size brush. They came in a set together. And then there's one more brush that's like a little fluffy pencil brush. So I'm just going to fluff this into my crease. Not getting too crazy here. I actually filmed another look before this and then I decided to stop when I was like halfway through filming because it was a super warm toned look and then I messed up my eye look because I put this milk makeup eye gloss on my eyes which it says you can use it for your eyes but I should have known like I would not have liked that look because I never liked that look but I did it and I like completely ruined my makeup look so I was super bummed about that. But I'm going to take Rebel <laughs> right here and I'm going to put this into the crease right below that first shade that we used not doing anything crazy this is just gonna add some definition applying it this way with like a really fluffy brush it's just gonna make it look really smooth and seamless but also kind of contour that eye so it defines it let me know if you guys want more kind of simple looks I mean there's only so much I feel like I can do but if you guys want to see something specific definitely let me know send me a picture on Twitter tag me do whatever you want to do because I'm always looking for inspiration so now I'm gonna take funny girl which is such a cute name and we're gonna pop this all over 
the lid. I really love Firecracker. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is like one of my most used shades. It's so nice. Um, but I'm going to take Funny Girl and put this all over the lid just to bring some life back to my eyes. You can do this with a highlighter if you wanted to, but I'm taking it all the way from inner corner to outer corner. And I'm using the top of this brush. If you guys can see, it's kind of rounded. Um, taking that top of that brush and really rounding out that crease as well. And I'm just going to lightly, without any extra product, go over in the crease to kind of blend out any harsh lines. I'm going to take this MAC 266 brush. It's just an angled brush. Great for cream, eyeliners, anything like that. I'm going to use the shade Leader. So it's kind of like a mauve brown. Very pretty. And I'm going to line my upper lash line with this. So this is great because it's going to line your lashes. Add a touch of color, but it's not going to be super harsh like a black eyeliner would be. This is like a must have for me because I'm not obsessed with my eye shape. You know, it's not terrible, but I have very droopy eyes. And then my inner corner kind of goes down, if that makes any sense. And if I put on false lashes and I don't do this, it kind of looks wonky. So it's good to just kind of line. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just prefer it for my eye shape. So that's what it looks like. It's just really simple, an extra step that really doesn't take any time. This brush is really great too. Uh, just applying that product and kind of blending it to where it looks a tad bit smoky, but not really. So that's what it looks like when I line the eyes. And then what you could do is take just like a pencil brush. This is one from MAC as well. This is a old brush of mine. I've had it forever. It even has rose like bite marks on it <laughs> when she was a puppy. But you can also go over and kind of blend the line just a bit to diffuse it. Give it more of a sultry, smoky look. Nothing too harsh. So now what we're going to do is curl our lashes and apply mascara. And we're going to apply false lashes. So this is the lash that I'm using today. And these are great because if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know I love dramatic, thick lashes. Like really thick lashes and these are awesome because they're really wispy and long and they give you a lot of volume but they look very natural like people aren't gonna look at you and be like wow you have really dramatic lashes on what are those the band is so thin you can't see it and the glue that we're using is clear so you're not gonna see that either I also want to let you guys know that kiss is sponsoring this video so thank you guys so much for working with me they've come out with so many different lashes that I'm really impressed with and I always think it's amazing when a drugstore brand really expands their line and just has so many different options for people and that's definitely what they've been working on and they have launched so many products so definitely check them out but this one is the kiss blowout lash they are the pompadour pompadour Pompadour. They're full bouncy volume and curl. The next generation wispy. These are super wispy and pretty. Um, the adhesive is sold separately. This is the adhesive that is sold separately. So this is the one that we'll be using today. It's just a clear adhesive. It has aloe and it does have a brush tip and it's $3.99 at Walgreens. Anyway, so it also says the latest trend in lashes, volumizing back tease technology. So they have a bunch of different styles. Like I said, I'm going to be using this one and I'm also going to be sharing with you guys how I apply false lashes. It also says contact lens friendly. That's good for all you contact users. I usually start with my left eye first. I don't know why. Take the lashes out, keep them in front of you, and like this lash goes to this eye, this lash goes to this eye. Um, whenever you're trimming your lashes, you want to trim from the outer part. So out here, in, you don't want to trim the inner corner first because it kind of just throws off the lash and it makes it look a little wonky. So definitely cut from the outside going in. Do you want to measure them, make sure they fit your eye. If they're a little too long, definitely cut them because you don't want it to be poking your inner corner. You don't want it to be kind of floating all the way out here. You definitely want it to fit your eye and look as natural as possible. So what I like to do is just bend this back and then I pull. Now, some people do this with tweezers. I'm a rebel. I just pull my fingers. I'm just gentle. I go in and I pull from the outer corner and I gently take them off. That way, if I accidentally pull off some hairs on the outer corner, it's okay because more than likely I'm going to have to trim them anyways. So I'm going to take the lash and just measure it first. Wow, these are cute. Okay. So what I like to do is put it in the inner corner. I don't take it all the way into the inner corner near the tear duct area because that's just going to irritate the crap out of you and you're going to hate that you ever wore false lashes. Make sure you kind of start right where your lashes start. Measure them out. Now these actually look like they're going to fit my eye like perfectly. That never happens. 
Like, for real. I'm going to trim just a tiny bit, just in case, like, I'm going crazy and they actually aren't the same length. So I'm just trimming a tiny bit off of the ends. And then what I'm going to do is kind of take this little tray and set it up as, like, my drying station. So I set it to the side and then I take my eyelash adhesive which is this right here. I'm one of those people who probably applies too much, um, but I like to make sure the whole entire thing is covered. That way they don't move throughout the night, which this adhesive is really nice. It also gets tacky very, very quickly, and I do like the brush tip so much better than squeezing it out of a tube because sometimes when you squeeze it out of a tube, you can be as gentle as possible, and it just, like, squirts everywhere. <laughs> brush is really nice. You have a lot of control. You can paint it on. And I just like to make sure there are no spaces that are free of glue. So that's what it should look like. And then I'm going to set it over on the drying station right over there. It literally takes just a few seconds to dry, like probably about 30 seconds, which is really great. And then I'm going to quickly do the same with this eye. So I'm going to take my eyelash curler and curl my lashes. I always do this no matter what. Cause like I said, I have droopy eyes and I want my lashes to be as up as possible. And then I'm going to take the Essence Volume Stylist Mascara. It doesn't really matter what mascara you use. I mean, I would use one of your favorites. This one holds a curl really well. I want to say that this lash adhesive does come in black. I normally use clear if I have no liner on, but I'll use a black glue if I have liner on. That way it just kind of blends a lot easier. I'm going to take the lash. So I'm going to grip the center and I lay down the center first. So I just pop it right there and then I go to the inner corner next and I just place it right there as close to the lash line as possible and then I work with this outer corner which is like the easiest best corner ever and again just apply that as close to the lash line as possible. You could also press your lashes together if you want to. You could take your tweezers and just kind of press down on the lash to make sure they're secure. When your glue is tacky, this makes the whole process so much easier. If your glue is wet, your lash will start moving around and you'll be like, what is going on? These are $4.49 at Ulta, Walgreens, and Walmart. And literally the reason why they call it blowout lash has to be because it literally looks like your lashes are so fluttery and full and natural. It's amazing. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to face, which is my favorite, you guys already know. We have so much new stuff, you guys. Like I just, I've been traveling and taking this stuff with me, trying to test it all out. I'm gonna use the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. I'm sure you guys have heard so much about this. So this was talked about a lot for a little while there, and as you guys can see, I've been testing it out, and to be honest with you, I have no idea how I feel about it. I do use this much. I know they say a little bit goes a long way, but this only lasts six months, and even though I got it for free in PR, I just don't want it to go bad and I put it between my hands I do feel like it really smooths out my skin it makes makeup application so nice but I don't I just I don't know how I feel about it I mean my pores do look a little bit smaller when I use this product I don't know if I'm obsessed with it you know to a new foundation this is the cover FX power play foundation another product I've been trying out and I don't know how I feel so I've been using n40 a lot recently just because I was pretty light for a little bit there. Now I'm going to use the shade G50. One thing I do not like about this foundation is the packaging. I know it's a really diva thing to talk about, but it's one of those things I think about like, okay, well, when you're at the near end of your foundation and you're trying to get it out, it's going to be so hard to squeeze it because you can only squeeze this bottle so much and then it's just starting to kind of hurt your fingers because you're squeezing it so hard. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's one of those things where I'm just not obsessed with the packaging. I would have much rather had a pump. I feel like when you get towards the end, you might have to like cut this off or like take this little cap off because it looks like you can do that. That's what this looks like. I'm going to use this with a beauty blender. I have found that I like a sponge way better with this foundation. I do not like a brush with it. First time I ever wore this, it was with Davis. And he complimented my makeup without me asking and said my skin looked really smooth. And I was like, what? You like this? Because I had put it on and I didn't really like it. So I was like, well, dang it. Now I got to try it out. It does have good coverage. Again, like I said, I don't like it with a brush. I just feel like it looks a little messy with a brush, if that makes any sense at all. This is the first time I've used this color and I don't mind it. Sometimes I feel like this can look a little dry. This is one of those foundations where I don't love how it looks when I first apply it. 
But once I do my concealer and the rest of my makeup and I kind of let it sit there for about an hour, I end up starting to really like it. Like so on the fence about this one too. It does have more of a matte finish as well. Can you guys see what I'm talking about? It just looks a little too textured and matte. But then when I get finished with my makeup and everything kind of melts together, it looks really good. So now I have this full coverage concealer from Milk Makeup. I have the PR little pamphlet here I want to tell you guys about. So it says it moves with your face and never creases or cakes. It says the flex seamless becomes one with your skin thanks to a combo of tiny bendable spheres and elastic marshmallow root powder. Um, the ingredient that gives candy the squishy abilities. Oh, that is so interesting. Good for your face. It says it's formulated with blue lotus and to moisturize and chamomile to calm the skin. That's good for people with redness like me. So you can cover imperfections while doing something good for your face. Flex weightless buildable formula gives you medium to full coverage you won't even feel. You can live your life without having to stop and check your concealer. It's still there. Growing shade range. The Flex Concealer family will double this fall with eight new shades. I think I'm going to take this shade first. This one is fair oh we have light medium and fair so we might do just a mixture of this because my face is pretty dark to match my neck and my tan body I'm gonna start with fair first and just see how this looks fair is not the lightest that's coming out I think it's the lightest that is out right now but there will be in fall 2018 you'll have two lighter shades than this so you have a little applicator like this let's go with this eye first and it is smells like Mac pro Longwear. So I'm going to take this down. That's pretty light. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of light medium in with that. And then I'm going to go in with my sponge. And we're going to blend this out. I'll be honest, I have not been the biggest fan of Milk Makeup. Just because I never found anything that really worked for me that well. This is looking actually really pretty. But we're going to blend this out and see how it looks. I love this Real Technique sponge so much. Some people think this is excessive. That's just how I like it. Fair is definitely too highlighted for me, so light medium is definitely gonna be my shade. I'm gonna take light medium over here, so it might not be even. I've also been trying out the YSL Touche. I call it the Touche concealer, but the Touche Eclat. So fancy, but it's really nice. <laughs> I've been really enjoying that concealer. I love the way this smells. I don't know what it is about MAC Pro Longwear, you guys, but. It's one of those concealers that, oh, I love light medium so much more than fair. Um, but MAC Pro Longwear honestly gives me so many, like, memories. <laughs> MAC was the first place I ever went to to buy higher-end makeup. I didn't even really know much about Sephora until I started YouTube. But MAC was, like, the place I needed to go and that I loved. And if I wanted to treat myself, I would treat myself with MAC products. And just such good memories with MAC. Like, I used a lot on this side because... A, I wanted to try it out with how I normally apply my concealer, but it really blends into like nothing. Like my forehead just blended into my skin so quickly. Then I'm going to take my sponge and just go over everything. I'm just really pressing everything, the foundation, the concealer, melting it all together so we don't have any harsh lines. That's what they both look like on. I do really like that concealer. I think it looks really pretty on the skin and with the, I don't know if I love it the most with this foundation, but I think I'm really gonna like that concealer a lot. Okay, now what we're gonna do is set the face. I'm gonna use this Milani Translucent Banana. I have not used this before. I got this in PR and I'm so excited to test it out. So it's 03 Translucent Banana from Milani. Ah, <gasps> oh, they have the good dispenser where you like can twist it and turn it off or twist it and have the sifter like this. We're gonna press this underneath the eye. Oh my lord. That is so smooth. Ooh, Milani. Oh my gosh. Do you guys see how smooth this is making my skin? Powder, man. Life changing. I've been really into applying powder with a sponge instead of a brush. Um, I just feel like it really presses it in there and melts it into the foundation and the skin. And it doesn't look cakey. I really like it. So I kind of start with my under eyes, kind of like how you would bake, but then if you just keep pressing it, it'll really melt it into the skin and it gives it this smooth finish. Do you guys see that? Oh my gosh. I love that. That's the best part about this. So you can turn it to have the sifter not come off. And if you have some in your lid, you could just... So I also got a new bronzer 
from Sephora. It is the Anastasia one, and I was so excited to get this, but I definitely got too dark of a color. I got the shade Rich Amber, so it's way too dark to bronze with. I am going to try to contour with it one more time. If I don't like the way it looks, and if I think it's too muddy, then I will return it and get a different shade. But the formula was really nice when I did try to contour with this, so I'm going to do that again today. I just went through my drawer, and I remember I used to love this bronzer, so we're going to use it today. It's the Laura Mercier Matte Radiant Baked Powder in Bronze 03. I used to use the Bronze 02 all the time. But we're just going to bronze the skin. Bronzer is so important to me. This is one of those bronzers where it just looks like your skin, but a little bit better. Like, just nice and bronzed and smooth. Kind of doesn't even look like you have bronzer on. I'm obsessed with it. And this brush is from Sonia Kashuk. Um, I know they revamped everything. I got this in like a little set from them a while ago, but I'm sure they have something very similar. It's just a little dome shaped brush. I forgot how much I love this. Like it looks so good on the skin. So for blush, I'm going to use the Ulta Velvet Brush. Blush. <laughs> so for blush, I'm going to use the Ulta Velvet Blush in Princess. Using this, using this foundation brush from Sephora. So. And it is so pretty on the skin. Oh my god, I almost forgot the contour. <laughs> and now we're going to take that Anastasia bronzer in Rich Amber. And we're just going to contour with this. I'm going to use this Morphe M510. I think most people use this for highlight, but I'm just going to use it for contour. Because it's small, it's fluffy. Ooh, we are contoured. And then again, I'm going to blend with that MUA stippling brush. Just to make sure we're all blended here. Okay, next is highlighter, one of my favorites. So I'm gonna take this Flower Beauty um, Shimmer and Strobe Highlighting Palette and I'm gonna mix the shade and the more golden tone. It's so pretty. And I'll just do like a little dollop of that really light one and put it right on the center. I'm going to take it down here. Now I'm just going to go in with my Catrice Ultra Slimatic Brow Pencils and just fill in these brows like I normally do. I'm going to take that same Tartlet in Bloom palette. I'm going to go in with Leader again, what we use to line our upper lash line. And we're just going to press this up against our lower lash line. You could just put a lighter shade down here if you wanted to. We didn't want anything too dramatic. Now I'm going to take my MAC pencil brush and go in with the Smarty Pants shade, which is this really light one right here, and blend that out. I'm going to use a brown eyeliner from Pure. It's in the shade On Point. I'm going to use this on my lower waterline. It's nice because it's not as harsh as black. And then I'm also going to line the upper waterline because this will make your lashes look a little bit fuller and it'll really melt them all together. To finish off the eyes, I'm going to take the Wet n Wild Mega Slim Skinny Mascara. Okay, and now I actually want to try out these new Urban Decay High Shine Glosses. I'm normally not into glosses, but I do want to try them out for the video. So I'm going to take this Essence Soft Contouring Lip. I'm going to take this Essence Soft Contouring Lip Liner. And then I'm going to go in with the shade Feel first, which is really pretty. Mmm, they're minty. They remind me of the mints that you get at Olive Garden. <laughs> then I'm going to take the color Midnight Cowgirl, which is like a little bit lighter, has a sheen to it. I just want to see what this looks like in the middle. So I really do like it, this makeup look. I think it looks so pretty. I think this look is great for pretty much anything. You could use it as a going out look. It could be an easy lunch makeup look, like if you just want to sit down and enjoy doing your makeup and do kind of like a full face. It is kind of springy. You know, it is pretty light on the eyes, some purple tones, highlighted, the gloss. It does have a little bit of the spring vibes and it's just really fresh and easy to do. And then you have these really gorgeous fluttery lashes and I just really like it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed kind of chit chatting with me as we do a lighter makeup look. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know down below what you want to see next and I will see you all in my next video. Bye! I never be your trusted friend or your sworn